there's no doubt the particles are going inside this uh, bunch of human CD, uh, CD3 cells, which would be CD8 and CD4. And um, um, it, the other thing is it's the majority of the cells have the take up. It's not just a rare cell with the take up. So it's not as if if you've got a tube of human blood and you isolate CD3 cells, some of them will be highly activated, some will be memory, all different stages of, 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 of development. And it looks like the majority have the take up of the particles too. So that's what I observed in the video. This is the first time I've seen the video, but that's what I see. Oh, okay. um, what's the definition of a nanoparticle? Okay, obviously something very small. So um, small particles, um, I guess, can be taken up as cells, but surprising it's T cells. Certainly monocytes and neutrophils, I mean, within minutes of isolating those cells with magnetic particles, you can see the particles inside. Um, kind of surprising that T cells would phagocytize a cell, and presumably they're phagocytizing through the receptor, the CD3 receptor, not just phagocytizing magnetic particles in solution. And that has to be the case because if it wasn't the case, you wouldn't be able to isolate CD3 cells. Every cell would come through because they'd phagocytize it. So it's got to be through the CD3 receptor that the uptake's occurring. Yeah, so we're pretty fussy about our cells. And um, um, we're interested in taking human T cells and doing assays with them and developing biomarkers and getting the assays very tight and standardized. So we're kind of beyond a typical mouse experiment where you're isolating mouse cells and you hope that within 10 mice you get some reproducibility. We really like um, human T cell isolations to be totally standardized. And in fact, we've automated a lot of them with high throughput uh, machinery. And in that case, our favorite T cell is a T cell that doesn't have a magnetic particle on the outside, or maybe you're even telling me on the inside. Um, and also a freshly isolated T cell that doesn't have an antibody attached either. So we kind of like, we think the best functional data is from human T cells that are like virgins, that they've had something attached to them, hopefully with an epitope that doesn't signal because these are all positive cell isolations. But most importantly, by the time you put that cell in a culture well and you're doing whatever you want from that cell, whether it's cytokines or T cell assays, that that cell has nothing on the surface. So that's our gold standard for a good cell. Our, we have marched through every single major bead manufacturer as we've tried to standardize human T cell assays. And we have, as we've tried to standardize these T cell assays for clinical trials, a number of criteria. And we have this little slogan. And the slogan in the lab is good cells in equals good data out, <laughs> okay? And the definition of a good cell in is a cell that's separated from blood that has good viability, purity, and yield, okay? So it's not satisfactory to us to have um, high viability T cells, but guess what? From a tube of blood, you only got 10%. Or uh, worse yet, you got 10% today, but you got 80% yesterday, and you got 40% the day before. So we want reproducibility, and we want high viability, high yield, and high purity. And that sort of standardization we've achieved with the detach beads. And I think in large part, um, it has to do with the fact that the beads are big. And also that uh, with the detach a bead um, process, there's nothing attached to the cell once you put it in the assay. Okay, there's nothing attached to it. So we can do a multitude of different assays and get reproducibility in the same person, follow weekly for six months, Okay, so think about being that blood donor, okay? <laughs> so, or we can see reproducibility of different people with different types of defects. But again, I think it has to do with modernizing how we separate cells and realizing that it's at the starting step that's going to dictate what the assays downstream uh, yield. And it's fairly remarkable that probably everybody watching this video at some time has been underneath the tissue culture hood doing FICAL. And it was the miserable step everybody tried to get through as fast as possible so they could do all the high tech work. But if you think about that technology, which is 20, 30 years old, probably older than 30 years old, um, the reproducibility assays are bad, but the reproducibility of isolating cells up front is bad. So once we realize that high throughput 
T-cell assays needed standardization up front, we realized we needed to go to positive T-cell selections. And from positive T-cell selections, we've gradually marched through all the technologies out there, refined those technologies, and found out that the tachybeads are the superior product.